Peace and love to everybody out there, right? So, I'm going to let this brother right here explain to you who he is and what position he holds in New York City. For me, before he even get to that, let me, let me make y'all understand something. This man has been active not only in the community, but when you see Hassan Campbell messing up, or rather Poppy messing up from back in the days to all the way now to Hassan Campbell messing up, you know, this is one of the brothers that's tuning me up behind the scenes. So, introduce yourself to the people and let them know who you are, what position you hold, and we'll take it from there. Well, good, afternoon. good evening. My name is Daniel Barber. Uh, I am the president of the Andrew Jackson Houses within the New York City Housing Authority. And I'm also the citywide chairman for the citywide council of presidents, which means I'm responsible for the 1.5 million residents of the New York City Housing Authority. So now, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with this brother. He pretty much carries the city on his back. Blood, sweat, and tears. He carry, he, he, carry, he carries the pain of the people on his back. This is what he does. Um, what I pretty much wanted to talk to you about, well, I feel like we pretty much on the same page, or maybe I'm wrong. I seen some posts where the mayor, our mayor, somebody that I support, that I was supporting. I actually like the mayor, but as the mayor, you're not above scrutiny when you're wrong. I don't feel like it's right for the mayor to tell the police to lock the homeless up when people were crossing the border. They're crossing the border on the other side of the country, but making their way to New York City. And they're finding shelter, they're finding programs, they got a budget behind them. But meanwhile, the people that live in New York City, that had City Phelps, their programs just, it, it's, they're not being paid. They're on the verge of being homeless. And in New York City now, being homeless is a crime. You either go to jail or you go to the mental ward. But people who illegally come to America, ends up in New York City and get the mayor's house fatality? Am I wrong? Am I saying anything wrong? Am I looking at it wrong? Am I reading wrong? I'm just trying to understand. No, nah, you you, <clears throat> you actually hitting the nail on the head. So there was an article that came out on Thanksgiving Day, and it was written by the New York Post. And it was basically stating how and it gave facts how the mayor agreed to pay for OSHA certification, OSHA 30, 10 hour site safety, and promised jobs for asylum seekers. When everyone in New York City knows with the NYCHA that to create a PLA, a project labor agreement, that says that you have to be in a union in order to work is a clear violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1968. Let's keep it 100. Everybody runs off of public housing on getting elected, but then they forget about the people of public housing. If you look back when everybody was running for mayor, everybody talked about how nitrous conditions and it's horrible the way people living in NYCHA. Yeah, we live in a petri dish, but nobody talks about the good things that come from nature. The position that I hold is a volunteer position. I do it because it's the right thing to do. I do it because it's what God wants me to do. So, it, 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 everybody deserves some place to live. But because you're seeking asylum, and you're looking for a better life, what's up with giving the people who already live here that asylum to give them the opportunity towards a better life? The politicians, you're talk because y'all got lips and they move. My mother used to always say, 
That pink thing that sits inside your mouth is worse than a gunshot any day. Mm. Because the things that we say to people, we don't think before we open our mouths. So the mayor was upset. Yes, I had I have his number. Yes, I'll reach out when I need something. No, he didn't call me back. He doesn't call me back. He may text me back and tell me to reach out to so-and-so, but that's it. And to get disgusted and tell me to lose your number, that's sad. I live here. I vote. I'm a voter. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mayor Adams, because I know you watch me because you use my slangs. You're going to tell me that you told the hardest working brother who's volunteering in the city to lose your number because you think that you're too big to be G-checked? If we made you, we can break you. So I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Because within the New York City Housing Authority, when Mayor de Blasio was mayor, I used to say he's the biggest asshole out there. That's what I said. I say it. And when I introduce myself, I tell you from the door, I know I'm an asshole. What's your problem? So... I really want to apologize to de Blasio for calling him a total ass. You're still an asshole, but you're not a total. <clears throat> the ignorance that I get because I speak my piece and I say what I want to say, it's all good. I don't have to call a name to get what I want to get done. Because if you realize it, living within NYCHA, NYCHA is bigger than Detroit. We're the 26th largest city in America. 1.5 million people. Imagine we all pull together and start voting on one block. Imagine we can determine who our mayor, our governor, our president, all of the elected officials are. So, as the president of the citywide council of presidents, it's not a threat, it's a promise. We're tired of people walking on us as if we're a doormat. We're tired of, we only see you for the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and, and we're around the holidays. I mean, for, for me, I gotta keep it all the way funky. New York is like the melting pot. We like M&Ms. Different nationalities all over the place. We all look different. We all look the same. We love each other. But it brings me back to when Trump said, build a wall. I never really liked that saying. But charity begins at home. And when I start to see that, Somebody could come from a foreign land and do better than what we're, what we're doing. You're getting the programs that we should have. It's like with the people begging for reparations. You're giving this asylum to somebody else from a foreign land and neglecting the people of this land of New York City. And that I can't sit back and be silent with. I'm sorry. And for you people that's out there watching, y'all got to start making topics like this more serious because it's going to affect, affect you. You are not the 1%. You are poor. You are paycheck, one, two, or three paychecks away from being homeless. So when you find yourself with the shelters being filled and there's no room for you because the foreigners is coming over the border and they're getting the budget, but there's nothing left for you. You, in a, you, you already in the program. You already have a program, already in an apartment. The program has been snatched. The budget is going now towards people that's coming over the border and there's nothing for you. You don't understand what that means? And then the mayor puts the stamp of, appro of approval on this and say also, okay, now, it's illegal for you to be homeless. So when you get tired of going to the shelter and you decide that you're going to live in the streets or you're going to ride the trains to keep you warm, in 10 to 20 degree weather 
He's going to have the police deem you mentally insane to have you locked up even, a, even in a psych ward because now you got to be crazy to be homeless or you got to go to jail. You got to be a criminal. You got to be crazy sometimes to go into the shelter. People don't understand what it is to go into a shelter system. Like going to the penitentiary? Yeah, some of the shelter systems, you are costed by the staff that's there. You lay down to go to sleep, you got to sleep that old cliche, one eye open, one eye closed. How can you sleep? And then in a lot of the shelters, there's no programs. There's no aid to help them to get any sustainability to change their lifestyle to get a better chance at the piece of the pie, the American pie, the good old American dream that everybody's running here to grab a hold of. When are we going to do something for home? We live in the poorest congressional district in the South Bronx. We've been labeled that over 30 years. There's funding that comes for programs. None of it makes it here. Our congressman, I'm going to say his name, Richie Torres, does, we don't get along. Because I don't agree. You stand in one sense and you for the people of public housing, and then the other sense, you agree with privatizing public housing. United States Congress, you sent over one point something trillion dollars to Ukraine, and our president will not commit to fight. But the residents of public housing ask for $80 billion, 48 for New York, and the rest for the rest of the country, and y'all won't even give us a dime. You killed the Build Back Better, which would have saved public housing, and brought it up to par. But you have sent money to Ukraine, and you just got another package now that will send another 600 and something billion dollars over to Ukraine, million or whatever, to Ukraine. It's bad. Come on. You got people here living in public housing and living in petri dishes, elevators, heat, hot water, right now. Night you can't handle the overload with the heat. How many seniors are going to die because of no heat or hot water? Next week it'll be 20 and 19 degrees. So I say to our politicians, if we good enough for your vote, we good enough for you to come around a lot more often and don't wait for an election year. Stop poverty pimping us and systematically oppressing us. You know, me personally, I think it's a crying shame that you'll find Mayor Adams sitting down with Fabio Foreign, Maino, and the rest of the rappers but you're not sitting there with the people that's actually doing the work and actually holding the world on his shoulders. The brother is holding the community on his shoulders, on his back, doing more than what you're doing, Mr. Mayor. I say this respectfully, that you need to get in tune. You want me to tell you something, bro? You want me to tell you something, bro? I'm glad you touched on that subject about all of those out there during cure violence. It started here, Andrew Jackson houses. Started here. Guns up. Guns, I repped them. Guns down, life rep, up. I rep guns down, life up. I'm their biggest billboard that they got. I've got a sweatshirt for every day of the week and a hat to match. I support them. Big up Erica Ford, big up A.T. Mitchell, the czar. They know when Andrew Jackson was turning up bodies back in 2010 and 2011, 13 to 25 homicides, one every other night, and you know, they was just dropping like flies, and y'all couldn't keep up with it. I bought Life Camp here. I, I, I was trying to figure out, and I, this is not no shot at none of the rappers, but I'm not one to bite my tongue. I'm not, I, I gotta under, I, I'm trying to figure out how the mayor went and sat down with rappers that live in mansions that rap about, they, they, they sell our kids poverty, pain, and prison. You sell our kids a one-way ticket to death or to jail. 
while you living in mansions. You wouldn't have sat down with them, Mayor, but you didn't sit down with the people that's actually out in the street saying, stop the violence, put the guns down. You sat with the dudes that's part of the problem instead of the people that's part of the solution. Help me to fit, I mean. It's not what you know, bro. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And we live in a society where if you make too much noise, you're not liked. It's all good, King. I know I'm hated by every last one of them. I know they don't like me, but guess what? I love me, and Jesus loves me. I'm a child of a king. Can nothing, none of them ever think about to even fester in their brain to think to do to me could ever come to fruition because I serve a God that sits high and look low, that tell me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and they all cowards out there. Because if you can only come to the people just to get a vote, to push your purpose, to take care of your family, your friends, and to fulfill all of your favors, then guess what? I need to start talking a little more and a little louder to the people. I need to start getting on outlets like Hassan Campbell, that got the followers, that the people love, to get the message across. We the people, for the people, by the people. We put you there. You ain't put us here. And it's up to us if you stay there. It's all about the people, baby. And you forgetting about who put you where you are. Everybody you climb on the ladder going up. You damn sure are gonna see him coming back down. So what what, what 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 would you like to see from the mayor? Like like what what are some of the things that you would like to see right now from, from the mayor? Because we're talking to you, Mayor Adams. Come to Collin Avenue. Come to Collin Avenue. Let's sit down and have a com community conversation. Let's have it. Come see. This is the belly of the beast. It's the belly. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. And like I said, I know I rub a lot of people because if you know it's wrong and you do nothing to fix it, you're just as guilty as those who are doing it. I noticed, I noticed one thing. It seems like to me lately on Killer Cortland, <laughs> Killer Cortland F., the killings that went down. Mayor Adams, that's not because of your police. That's because of these community oh, activists no. that live in the community that's out there working with these young kids and calming them down, putting the fires out. Bro, that's not the police because we had the car that pulled up and pulled out and shot seven shots where two people got hit. A resident of Andrew Jackson, a young man that works with the kids, and then another young man that I helped get a job with, NYCHA. The police beat the community to Park Avenue to run away from the bullets. And his job is to protect and serve. The big cop. The big cop. They call him High Tower. Dude was like nine feet tall. And he ran and he beat him. He beat the young kid in the hood, the fastest kid that run the 40-yard dash in 4-2 flat. The cop ran the 40-yard dash in 3.8 seconds. All we saw was his back and his gun belt. So it ain't about that. It's the community that's tired of it. We're standing up. The OGs know their responsibilities. That's what it's going to take. It takes the village to raise the children. And when Giuliani came in and poisoned and changed everything in 93, he took the village away when he told the kids it's all right to call ACS on your mother. There was never nothing wrong with a little BCW, a black child whooping. We all got them once in a while. The problem is, is us. We think we're owed something. Get off of your do nothing and do something to make where you live better. And stop letting these politicians lie to you to get to where they want to be. And they sit behind the desk and do absolutely nothing for you. So well, one more question. What do you have to say to the tenants? What would you like to see more of from the tenants and um in, in NYCHA, even even in the tenement buildings? What would you like to see from the community? Because there's more that we can do 
in this community, in our communities, to make the job even more easier on you and others that's actually working. More participation. Like what? As I'm far the, as I'm the president of the resident association. Here at Andrew Jackson Houses, we have 868 apartments. We have 2,325 residents. And if I get the same 30 that come to a tenant meeting, that's a lot. I have to do the flyer to say that they're selling the, they selling NYCHA in order for you to come to a meeting. And then you come and you talk through the whole meeting, you don't know, but then you come outside and say what they discuss in the meeting. The residents have to stop throwing the garbage out the window. That's why there's incinerators on every floor. The residents got to stop urinating in the elevator and defecating on the staircase. If you want to hustle and get your bread, don't do it in the building. Everybody shouldn't have to be subjected to how you get your money. I watched the other day while the lady was standing waiting for the elevator and the crackhead wanted a bottle of crack. The dude took it and leaned over the lady's head to sell the crap. That's embarrassing, man. They never did that when we was growing up back in the day. Automatic violation. They stopped. Here come Miss Jones. Here come Miss Gonzalez. Stop. Miss Jones, Miss Gonzalez, you need help to the building. You carry their bags. Now, they robbing Miss Jones and Miss Gonzalez to go in the building and go upstairs, not realizing who they related to. And the, the problems that you create. So to the residents, we have to do our part before we can point a finger at night or anybody else to do their part. You're responsible for your guests. The window is not the garbage can. That it is part. not. It is not. Because we can walk outside right now and look in the grass and you'll see all the garbage that's coming out the window. And it's the people that you know as the president. So when I tell you that they came out of your house and I watched it, you tell me, no, they don't do that in my house. So I got to pull out my phone and show you the pictures of the stuff coming out your window for you to believe it. We have to do better. The downfall of housing also lays on our backs. NYCHA misuses the money. NYCHA puts all these high positions. NYCHA definitely hires all of their family. They fulfill all of their favors with jobs, and they don't show look out for every friend that they know. But the residents can't get the same sustainable opportunity for change. That's what everybody in life wants is change. But it's also the hardest thing to accept, and it's the most scary thing to come in your way, change. If the residents change how they live and how they take care of home, it'll be better. What's different to, between the resident now and the resident 20 years ago in public housing. We didn't have prison bars up. Remember the little poles with the chain fence? Right. The, link? the chain link that used to go through? That's all we had. And you knew not to go on the grass because your mother would kill you because she got a $25 fine. Now, we now live in, like we live in like we in a minimum correctional facility, a medium correctional facility. Four foot and 10 foot gates to keep you closed in. If that doesn't show you that, they say the projects. We're living within the project. This is the project for the government to systematically oppress us and to keep us down. And we don't see it. We don't see it. Open your eyes, people. Open them. Open them. There you have it. That's Mr. Mayor right there. That's what we call the Mr. Mayor. The risk is the real mayor right here. The brother that put his blood, sweat, and tears in, in, in the community, just earlier today, giving away coats and toys at a at a um, in the community center toy drive. Yeah, we did a toy drive today. I want to thank uh, my partner, Sean Reed, thir um, 31 Media Group. He came through. Um, we was able we was able to get um, a little Mo to come out. Thank you, Little Mo. Shout out to Little Mo. Vanette Burrow, President Vanessa Gibson, Assemblywoman Chantel Jackson. The fire department came out. EMS taught the kids CPR. We did coats. We gave out over 375 coats and toys. Older kids got gift cards. So, I mean, there's positive things that go on in the community. 
but everybody only shines a light on the negativity. We doing great things, and there's other people that's doing similar things in public housing that do the same work that I do. But it's up to us to step up. It's up to us to be more involved. Let's stop pointing the finger and get more involved. And um, you can see me on Facebook, Instagram. You might have known me by It's Your Boy. Yeah, coming soon. Social media near you. And not the last time me and Hassan are going to kick it. We'll be back together in another couple of weeks to sit down and break down some topics about NYCHA. If you don't stand up and fight for what's yours, then you don't deserve it. People are coming over the border, and they're going to replace you. And work, and your livelihood, you're going to feel it. Sooner or later, you are being entertained. Or you're not entertained. You're being entertained while your, your, your Titanic is sinking. When the brothers call and your community activists, your community leaders, we're not talking about the activists that's getting activated, that's getting paid, that's, that's running around in luxury apartments. We're talking about the brother that's still in the gutter, still in the hood, still living in public housing. And don't get paid for we don't get paid and don't as get a paid. resident leader. It's a volunteer position. Volunteer. No pay, no monetary. I don't want it. This is I not, don't want your pay. This is not the ambulance chaser. How long have you been doing it? I've been doing this now for twenty one years. Twenty one years I've been the citywide chair. Just got reelected to my second term. It's three years each term. And when I first got in, the first term, we took NYCHA and the federal government to court, and we won. We sued them. We got the federal monitor to make changes. We sued them. So we know when the people come together, we can make the change that we need. I just need y'all to come together. Stop sitting amongst each other, pointing the finger and complaining, and come to the meetings and come where your voice needs to be heard. It's your boy and Hassan. I appreciate the opportunity, brother. Man, I appreciate you. There's no there's no me without Big Worm. There's oh, no me yeah. without Big Worm. That's my name. Y'all better understand man. something, man. This 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 man right here, like, <coughs> he helped to put me on a straight path. He's always in my ear from, from the young days to the older days when I mess up. When I when when I go when I go through things. Like when I'm in a hospital, when I'm in a jail cell, when I need a lawyer, when I'm in trouble, the brother. He's actually doing the job trying to get a brother on the right track. So he plays a big, big part in the, 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 the role of Poppy turning back into the Hassan Campbell brother. You know, the one that y'all love to hate? <laughs> that part, love, hate, it is what it is. We gonna hit him in the we gonna hit him in the head with that knowledge shot, that headshot, man. Yeah. And y'all pay attention to your circle before they hurt you, man. It's cold outside. Stay in the house where it's safe. Because it's safe to say it ain't safe outside. Yeah. And the mayor ain't trying to come outside amongst the people. He, he like it nice and warm. Or when he do come out, he, he wants lights, cameras, actions the way he wanted. No, you got to give the people what we want. Yeah. We outside, outside. We outside, baby. Every day. Peace and love, everybody. Until next time. We out.